guys, it's Alicia here with my work basket. I am finally taking the time to record for you the box of magazines and patterns that was in my car from my car load video. Um, unfortunately, it took me a couple days. So when we got home from vacation, my son got sick the last day that we were there and then it hit me soon after I got home and it's just been a rough week, y'all. So I finally am able to actually physically carry the box into my house and record it for you. So I have a whole box of stuff. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with each one because the video would take forever. So it's just going to be like cover, 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 cover with a few little bits in between. But if you want to see my new haul, I am about to show it to you. I have cleared off some of my craft table, probably not enough for what I'm about to do because what fun would that be? So I'm going to turn the camera around, get situated and start going through this box. I've got the box on the side of me here and I'm just going to magazine, 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 pattern, 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 book, book, book until all around me is piled and the box is empty. So let's get started. All right. So I've got the camera situated and I'm going to grab a small stack to kind of work through. So this was actually a planner and I thought this was super cute. I wish they still did them this basic. It literally just has engagements, shopping list. The shopping list actually peels out. Urgent reminders, shopping continued. I mean, menu and guests. I wish they kept them that easy now. So many planners now are way too complicated. But I just got that because it was super cute. Honestly, I can't decide if I'm going to use it or keep it for other things just because it is so adorable um it's dates and dishes code 318 from current incorporated and you can see here it looks like somebody did a sewing pattern transfer thing on the back but that was just super cute okay so then we go into a stack of magazines now if you are new to the channel or you haven't watched one of my previous magazine videos i do collect vintage magazines predominantly craft magazines but i venture into all sorts of women's interest in homemaking magazines i do not usually buy any magazines newer than 1990 unless i have some other reason for buying them so most of them be, will be before 1990. this is july of 1988 crafts uh count on cappy holiday greetings these are cross stitch greeting cards i do cross stitch on occasion but i don't tend to like long or detailed projects in general but i do buy when i see pretty much any vintage looking book like this or if it's very simple projects i tend to buy them um one magazine one not one magazine one thrift store had a bunch of these christmas magazines and i love christmas and i love specialty christmas magazines so i got the entire stack that they had at the time regardless of year and for this this one for example doesn't even have a year many of the others are right around my collectible dates but you will see a stack of those here is another little set of quick cross stitch yule titers from another count one cappy i like those type of quick projects because i feel like it's a lot more likely that i will actually complete them here's another christmas this one is 1990 march april 1990 how great would it be if you could still get a year-round Christmas magazine. I would just love it. May, June 1990 of the Christmas. July, August 1990 of the Christmas magazine. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually flip open any of these Christmas magazines. I usually don't flip open any of the magazines to get them. Um, this one is September, October 1990. So usually if you've ever been in a thrift store, you know they're on a shelf or they're in a box. And I'll literally just be like, date, 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 and like just pulling them out. I don't even flip through them until later if they're cheap. I rarely ever pay more than 50 cents of a magazine. All of these were, I think, 10 cents a piece. So yeah, for 10 cents a piece, I'm not going to waste my time going through and picking out specific issues besides making sure they're in my collectible years. So this one is March, April, 1991. So again, it's a little bit outside the year that I usually buy, but I was getting all these Christmas ones no matter what. This is May, June, 1991. September, October, 1991. Here's another set of quick easy cross stitch ones count on cappy a treasure for christmas the tricky thing with some of these type of books is they tend to use a very specific outside element that you often cannot buy anymore but something like most of these generic designs you can make bookmarks you can make pretty much anything and i'm guessing this is from 1986 because that's the date that's in this ornament here crafts with simplicity winter 1986 
Another Christmas. This is November, December 1991. With this being so late in 1991, this is actually probably one of the newest issues in my entire magazine collection because I don't usually go that new. For the Love of Cross Stitch, a Leisure Arts publication. Leisure Arts are an additional one that I pretty much buy whenever I find them. The Leisure Arts magazine was just a really good magazine and I don't always date check those. And the date check on this is also not extremely visible. So I kind of went for that one anyway. Grab a second stack here. The Christmas Annual, Quick and Easy Christmas Annual. This is 1985. Here's another of the Christmas magazine, July, August, 1991. Crafts 10th birthday issue. This is from May, 1988. Boy, that is some, that is dated. Like if you looked at this, you, you would kind of know when it was from, am I right? Um, a Christmas in miniature. This one's all cross stitches. I'll show you the back of that. Oh, this is really cute. Decoupage, complete decoupage book, step-by-step -step guide for teachers and hobbyists. Decorative tin can craft. Tin can craft is actually something I've thought about getting my son to do, and I have a couple things for that. I was traveling a long way. Oregon State College, and I got it in South Carolina. Um, this one I think I actually have, a Fin Time by Eila, Eila, E-I-L-A. Um... Those type of pattern books, I, I tend to buy them a lot. Quick and easy folk art. This one's kind of, you can tell that's kind of late 80s, early 90s. The Jingle Bell book. This is actually all Jingle Bells. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure why I bought this. This isn't really my general style at all. But I just do so much variety and you never know what will inspire you. And again, 10 cents. So I'd rather risk it than be too picky trying to go through. I can always get rid of it later. So this is Golden Hands. I actually have the full Golden Hands hardback book series that had all of these pamphlets in a book set, but I still buy these whenever I can find them because why not? Uh, decorative crafts for your home from Family Circle. This one I did a very minimal flip through because it was a book and not just a 10 cent craft thing. And I will never find it just flipping through real quick, but there was some cute stuff in there. Modern Moods from, I never know how to pronounce this. I think it's actually Jaeger, but that's another one of those. I tend to buy that type of knitting and crochet booklet because why not? Country Calico, easy color mixing and easy patterning designs. I actually really love this vest pattern. I've, I've been super into the idea of vests. I have not actually made any yet. I've talked about them on the channel a lot but I've just been super into the idea of this. And this is all applique creative patterns. If I remember correctly, this actually goes with the creative hands or something like it. I have some other of these little mini booklets. Crocheted fashions. The cover on this is actually missing because this is the back. And that is a star book, number 116, 10 cents originally. And I paid 10 cents for it. Um, this is Country Handcrafts Fashion, 1987 it says. Country Handcrafts is another good one that I just tend to buy whenever I find them. I just really like them. It's kind of funny because last year I got rid of a bunch of these painting type books and then this year I sit there and bought more. I don't know. That's how it happens with me. Iron on transfers for the Santa collector. I have a huge thing for Santa. I love Christmas. I love Santas. I love different kinds of Santas. And most of these are probably not something I would make, but I went for it anyway, because I am me and I am a bit of a hoarder when it comes to crafts. So Country Handcrafts, this is a 1992. Again, I don't usually go that late, but I like this title in general. So I got a bunch of newer ones this year than I would usually get. And then this one is Junior Bulletin Boards. And it is bulletin board themes. They seem to be all very church oriented. A lot of times these older bulletin board books have some great templates for just tracing and using for other stuff. Let me get another stack. All right. 
This is another Country Handicrafts. This one is 1987. Country Graphs. I don't actually remember what this one is. Oh, they're all like cross stitch. There we go. I love a nice, quick, simple craft. Teach yourself counted cross stitch. I think I actually have one of these already, and this one is not folded up correctly because I can't tell what's going on here. So it's got. Yeah, it's kind of folded a bit wonky because this is the front. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's like folded backwards. But anyway, teach yourself counted cross stitch. This one was all um, this style of needlework, kind of like a Swedish weaving type of style and charts for that. This little piggy stayed home. It is just different pig themed crafts. And I can't remember what it was, but there was a specific thing I saw on here. I might've been this one. Don't mess with the cook's buns. There's also a funny one with when you've got it, flaunt it. Some of these booklets are just so super, super thin. They take up so little space that it's like, why, why not get it and keep it and see if it inspires you and always get rid of it later. So this is the, I will never be able to say this correctly. It is the paper cutting and it is a country collection for paper cutting. I have an aunt that recently mentioned the paper cutting to me and a friend who wanted to kind of try it. So I have this that I can loan to either one of them if they're interested. And then we get into even more of the Christmas. This is January, February, 1991. So it's looking like I have both full issues of 1990 and 1991. November and December 1990. Here's another Leisure Arts. And again, I tend to buy this one regardless of the year. And this one's actually October 1993. So some magazines are just too good to pay, pass up. Some magazines are just too good to pass up because they're not a year that I currently collect. Whereas in like five years, my year dates will probably move up and, you know, then I'll collect them then. So make mine a country miniature. Again, this is really quick little cross stitches. But one thing I noticed with these is that while they are small, some of these were surprisingly detailed. And I don't know if that'll really pick up on camera or not. But like there's a doll here that's clearly a porcelain doll in a colored dress with multiple shading. So even though those are small projects, there's a lot more detail than you often find in small projects. Country, how to, a how to make it sewing and craft book. And this is one of those that I did not date check. It just kind of dates itself and I went with it. Also recently a friend mentioned to me how they were looking for like a broom cover. People mention these things to me. I'm looking for a such and such. And I like to try to have something I can send them. Whether it be you as a reader, a viewer, you know, if, you, if you're looking for something, message me. And if I know I have it, I will gladly help you out. So another Leisure Arts. This one is from June 1993. Leisure Arts magazine. It's just one of my favorites to come across. Let me see. Maybe if I flip through there, you'll see why. So they are one of those magazines that have a little bit of everything. So this one has cross stitch, including some very detailed ones. Usually they also have a knitting pattern. They also usually have a sewing pattern. Some of them are quick little things. I think I actually have this issue because this seems very familiar. So it's very, oh yes, definitely, because I recognize that. So it just features different things. This is Oatmeal by the Yard, Quilting, Cross Stitch, and Country Crafts. And some of this, like this shape here on this curtain window glass thing, that's cute, you know, like some things are just so simple. You can see the same kind of shape here. You just never know what's going to inspire you, what's going to come back into shape. I love this giant soccer ball shape with the apple on it. I just love vintage books and magazines, you know? In times past, cross stitch and quilting.
Um, this is another Count on Cappy of the Little Projects Matters for it All. Also, I don't know if I finished saying what my friend was looking for. My friend was looking for a broom cover. Like, I remember them being really common. You'd think I'd have tons of them. But I cannot necessarily verify that I have any patterns for a broom cover, which kind of surprised me. Leisure Arts again. This one's 1992, and I'm going to have to start a different pile here because I am running out of space. This pile is going to start toppling over soon. Bears and Hares, Peaceable Kingdom series, step by step techniques, painting patterns. Let me find an example there. Oh, that's cute. So it's all different painting type, type stuff. I'll be honest, I'm a terrible painter. I'm terrible at all of the more like fine arts, drawing, painting. Yeah, I'm awful at all of them. Um, Christmas Crafts, 1985. Celebrations to Cross Stitch and Craft. This is the premiere issue, but I don't actually see a date. Leisure Arts Magazine, April 1993. So yeah, that one magazine I thought was one of my newest is not actually one of my newest because there are several newer ones in the box. So I got this hand puppets and how to make and use them. This is the type of book I just buy because I work with kids groups and this is the type of thing I can take in with a stack of paper and a stack of stuff and just kind of throw at the kids and see what they come up with. Mm -hmm. And I also bought this vintage set, um, questions children ask, things to make and do, and the story hour. I bought all three. Um, I don't actually know what I'm going to do with these. I just knew that honestly, if I didn't get them, they'd probably sit in the store that I bought them from for months and months and months, possibly even be there next time I went because where I was visiting, people don't tend to buy this stuff. So I just kind of had mad respect for it. Some of these pages are a bit folded in this one ish, this one book. Um, so I just didn't want it to just sit there languishing when I could take it home with me and figure out later what to do with it. So if you're watching and you happen to be interested in these, I will gladly resell these to you. I saw the things to make and do first, and I do always buy those because of the groups that I work with, but all right, let's see what else. We are mostly, mostly done the box already. Uh, this is just a regular book, The Grey King. This goes with the Darkest Rising series, which is an amazing book series. I highly recommend it if you like to read. Um, make sure you do read them in order. The Dark is Rising is not technically the first book, but I love it. It's my favorite in the series. I'm pretty sure I've read them all. Um, sometimes I loan them out. And so when I find them really cheap, I buy them so that I always have a complete copy in case any of mine are missing. Embellished, embellished Sweatshirts, Volume 1. You can pretty much look at that and tell when it is from. But I... I Forget. I had a specific reason recently that I was looking for something like this and now I don't remember what it was. So magic with made over jean fashion clothing. Oh, look at, look at that jacket. That is, um, that is something else, isn't it? Let's just leave it at that. That is something else, but I'm trying to get even more into repurposing and minimizing waste. And so I thought some of that type of stuff, while the patterns they use are a bit dated, a, a bit just just a little bit dated um while the patterns on some of these are a little bit dated I thought they might give me some good ideas for how to reuse different things and again they are technically in the years that I buy so um so this is crafts from July 1990 living dolls Um, also, if you are watching this because you love when I do vintage magazines, the last two Fridays, I did not have a Friday flip. I apologize. I actually recorded a whole series of Friday flips that all go together. And then they were shaky. I mean, like really shaky. Like if you watched them, there is no way you could watch it and not feel sick. And I've always promised you I'm going to do my best to avoid that. So I just couldn't. I couldn't post them and I didn't have time to re-record them with going away and with being sick. But moving forward, hopefully I will not miss any Friday flips. 
Um, but yeah, so if you're watching this well in the future, so this is actually, it's actually July 4th right now, but if you're watching this well in the future, you can ignore that part of me talking about Friday Flip. It'll be all caught up by then. But if you're watching this when it just came out, yes, I'm missing some Friday Flips and I apologize. So this is the Creative Kids Super Book, Quick and Fun 100 Projects. It's kind of funny. You are actually seeing some of this stuff for the first time the same as I am because... Yeah, I don't, I don't pay attention when I buy this stuff. Um, Women's Household, July 1976. I have mentioned this on the channel before. There were several of these in the big box of magazines I've gotten recently. I love Women's Household. I just think it's super cute. Quaint. I love it. Um, Crazy Wicking and Ribbon Wicking for the Nursery. Um, I was actually kind of curious what Crazy Wicking and Ribbon Wicking are. Um, I am very familiar with candle wicking. I've done it before. I can't necessarily say it's something I adore, but I have done it. And some of these were just cute, cute little designs. So I don't know. I'll figure out what crazy wicking and ribbon wicking are. Um, grandma goes shopping. It is the dress with hat and purse for this doll. I've seen this grandma doll. Honestly, I love dolls, but I think this particular one is a bit goofy for my personal taste. But since I do dolls in general, you just never know who else that doll might fit. So yeah, for 10 cents, I bought it. Um, Women's World Money Savers Family Crafts. I happen to know for an absolute fact that I have this issue already. In fact, I did this issue as a Friday flip recently, I believe, because here is the egg scratching. So if you go to my Friday flip videos and you look for one where I mentioned finding a new craft that I've never done before, this is that issue. So I now have duplicates of that issue. Uh, Leisure Arts Magazine, February 1995. So 1995 means this is probably the newest issue in my collection. Lollipop, brought to you directly from Cupcake Corner. You're probably looking at these and thinking I am absolutely, you are not entirely wrong if you're thinking I'm absolutely crazy. Again, they're usually in a stack and I just like pull based on dates. I'd rather go through them later than spend like six hours in the thrift store when it's 10 cents. So... I'm spoiled like that now. Admittedly, I didn't always have that kind of money. So, uh, Doris Crochet Dolls, Baby Billy Doll. And this again just goes with like, first of all, I love QB, but so this is Baby Billy, apparently Bonnie Bunny, QB. I do love QB, but again, I do dolls. And you never know, even if you make like an amigurumi or something, some of these same clothes, you never know who they'll fit. Dolls Around the World. She is a. Uh, She's got some eyeballs on her. This is Melissa the Milkmaid. So they're designed exclusively for the Doris standing doll. And another interesting thing is I do regularly buy... Oh, tapped my camera there. I do regularly buy vintage craft supplies. Um, right now I'm doing the Summer of Stash. I'm not buying any craft supplies. But I often do. And when I do, if I saw something like this doll kit and it was affordable, I would buy it. And so... My brain works in a very weird kind of cataloging way. So if I happened to find that doll head or that doll in a kit, in a craft thing somewhere, I would probably realize that I had a pattern to go with it because my brain is weird. So this is not the type of thing that I usually buy at all. Tiffany Stained Glass Collector Society presents collector collectibles, decor decorator collectibles boy that came out weird and it's all these like little stained glass shapes and I'll be honest with you sometimes I feel really guilty about cutting up this kind of stuff because I feel like if everybody cuts up this kind of stuff there's going to be nothing left for the future and preservation and people coming back to this kind of thing in the future is a big deal for me but I might cut it up so uh, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, November, December, 1986. This one is an interesting choice for me. I am actually wildly terrified of clowns. Please never use that against me. Um, but yeah, so I got these playful clowns. Maybe I should pay better attention of what I'm randomly grabbing based on their dates and style alone. Because that's a wild one for me. No Sew Calico Country Fun, the look of sewing without a stitch. Oh, these are cute to be, like, not sewed. Like, 
some of these things you could picture those in like updated fabrics i love those chickens and they'd be super cute um a book of needlepoint and this is the different stitches as patterns Frederick Remington by Ernest Rapt, Art for Children. It's got art on this side and then like information on the other. All right, so we are actually almost done, which is good because my battery, I thought I started with a full enough battery and apparently I did not. I've got December Decorations, a holiday how-to book. Oh my gosh. I got this because I love Peggy Parrish. But look at this. Signed by Peggy Parrish. So a little known fact is that Peggy Parrish actually grew up in the county where I came and where I visited, where I grew up. She is from that area. And wow, so she has signed this book. That is amazing. I love that. So I've got a book signed by Peggy Parrish. Um, if you've ever read, because this is a question I get a lot when people hear that, if you've ever read Peggy Parrish and there is an Uncle Alkaloo or a Cousin, cousin Alkaloo, I think it is, people ask me how you pronounce that. It is Alkaloo. That's actually the exact name of the town I was, like, my childhood home was in. Alkaloo. So it's Cousin Alkaloo. People do ask me that. It's a weird thing, but that happens. Um, 500 gluten-free dishes. A friend, uh, not my, a friend of mine, a cousin. Uh, uh, talking about family for Peggy Parrish got me all befuddled. My niece was shopping with me and handed me this one. And honestly, I am gluten-free. I don't usually buy a lot of gluten-free cookbooks because they tend to use like 600 types of flour and all these specialty ingredients. And you guys ain't nobody got time for that like I'm just not into it but this one seemed like they were a lot of things that were easy enough to make easy enough to do and I loved that they included variations so if you do their falafel it tells you right here other things you can do with like the exact same falafel so I thought that was pretty good the woman's day book of granny squares another carry along crochet if you are not new to the channel, I'm sure, excuse me, I'm sure you've heard me talk about granny squares. I adore granny, ooh, excuse me, I adore granny squares. Granny squares are the reason I learned to crochet, like single-handedly the reason that I learned to crochet. Here's that scene hat I was just showing in color. I adore granny squares. So yes, absolutely, I got that book. This one is The Art of Clear Thinking. This is not craft related at all, but I happened to flip through this and I saw just some different things. So like that page has Longfellow poetry. Um, I don't know. It just had all different. That I just saw a page that like mentioned Socrates, how not to be bamboozled. I was like, I just want to spend more time with it. And so I got that. And then we have a few more sewing patterns that weren't in the other box and we are done. Little Toy Soldier Quilt. I just thought it was cute. And then it has the matching Little Toy Soldier. Good Food from December 1988. I got this because, hey, it's food and also it's well within my magazine collectible years. I flipped through it. I thought it was going to be kind of simple recipes because it's just these cookies, but they're like kind of fancy. Like when it says good food, it means like fancy food um fennel and red pepper saute which i mean that doesn't it doesn't sound insanely fancy now i suppose i cook with fennel somewhat regularly but it was just a lot fancier than i expected i should say so i also got simply good cooking because that is what I do. Um, pack of fun magazine. I did get more than one pack of fun. The other, I don't know how many I got. The others, however many that may be, were in the box in my car unloading video. Pack of fun is probably my second favorite, ultimate favorite magazine to collect. Um, my first favorite magazine to collect is the original work basket of which my collection is probably beyond complete. I am missing some of the very, very earliest issues and some of the very, very most recent issues. 
and most of the others I probably have. I really need to chronicle them and find out. Um, but second is probably Pack of Fun. And then all the others when I'm like, oh, I love them or this one is my favorite. They're kind of in, you know, no real order. Um, I mentioned in the car unloading video, my son is a giant. He is six foot four already. He is only 14. So I have talked to him about sewing his own clothes. And so, especially because they're only 10 cents, I grabbed some patterns. Um, I did not check the patterns. I don't know if the pieces are all there, but again, for 10 cents, I'm not counting pattern pieces. That's just now how, not how I operate. Um, and then this is the last thing in the box besides the vintage password game. And this is a Simplicity Vintage Sewing Pattern. As you can guess, I did not count the pattern pieces or pay attention to what size it is. If you are curious, it is size 16 miss. Uh, the reason that I don't particularly pay attention to sizing or if the pattern pieces are there is because honestly, I do so many types of crafts. And I also actually hate sewing with sewing patterns. If all of the pieces are not in here, I can cut out these figures for other purposes. I can decoupage with these pattern pieces. I can use them as junk journal pages. There is other things I can do to make use of that pattern for 10 cents without spending like an hour counting all of the pieces. Also, I am absolutely terrible at folding sewing patterns up enough to make them fit all tidy. And so it is just not worth it to me when I'm purchasing them, if they're 10 cents a piece, especially to sit there and count all the individual pieces because I will make a mess. Like you can see this one's torn here, but if I had counted these, they would not be so tidy and clean looking. And then just because I mentioned it already, I did buy a vintage password game. I showed this in the car unloading video. If you really love craft and vintage stuff, that is a long video also, but I do highly suggest you watch it if you love vintage craft stuff um, because it is seriously a car load full of vintage and craft stuff and vintage craft stuff. So I got this cute vintage password game. I just thought it'd be super fun. So that is the box. Um, in my car load box, I said there will be another video where I unload this box this exact box that I just unloaded. So that is that video. This, this is that video. And then I'll also have at least one more video of that car load where I go over all of the parts for my new knitting machines. I bought two knitting machines with ribber attachments and tons of accessories. And in fact, I misspoke in my car loading video, car load video. I was unloading ish. Um, I did not pay $200 for each machine. I actually paid $200 total for my knitting machines. It was $100 per machine and ribber, which if you know anything about mach knitting machines, that is a steal of a deal. I made out like a bandit on that deal. I like, I almost feel guilty about it, but I paid what they asked. So I can't exactly feel too terrible. So that is everything that was in my box from the car loading video. There will be another video um, related to the knitting machines. So this is kind of a kind of a three-part series. I'm taking this out so you can see there is this doesn't go here, but oh it does go here, I guess. Isn't that the cutest? I saw these people kind of through the um, so yes, there will be at least one more video related to the car load. Um, but if you like vintage and craft items, this video was all books and magazines, but there are other videos in the series or there will be. Um, I thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you, for any reason, are looking for any issues or books or magazines that you see in this video, please get in touch with me. I buy these to have them, but I have absolutely no qualms about passing them off to a good home. Um, I buy them because I find them and they're affordable and I want to save them. And most of these, I have no strong dedication to necessarily keeping in my household. So if there's something that you saw and you're like, I've been looking everywhere for that, comment below let me know and let's get it in the hands of the people who really really want it because that's that's what i love so i will probably be doing some of these magazines as a friday flip 
Hopefully I will have a Friday flip this week coming up with no more technical issues. I have no idea why my videos were so shaky. It was extremely annoying. My video settings must have got set to a weird setting because I have all kinds of stabilization set up. I don't know what happened. But anyway, this video was more than long enough. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you have a great, great, great day. And let me know in the comments below if anything you saw struck your interest in any way. Even if you just want to say that it's neat, chat with me in the comments because I love chatting with you. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye!